How's the size of this croc that's just chilling here? I've never actually seen this croc before, but... Well, not in this area. I think he's the one that generally sits on one of the first right-hand bends because he seems to be very friendly. Like it if he stayed that way because I'm kind of casting around his zone. Such an epic creature, though. Absolutely stunning morning here. I'm out in the river at the moment. Um, bit of a game plan today. I'm in the tinny, doing my thing. Ice, tucker box, camera gear, filleting knife, lemons, limes. I've got a bit of a game plan going on today. So the idea is to last the run out tide at the moment. I know I need a 1.8 to get out of the river and a little kind of way that I head out of here. So we're gonna wait a little bit. Tide is gonna start coming in. And we're gonna start kind of making our way out, but we're just gonna live our way out of here. Try and see if there's a couple of big fish just sitting in this slack tide, waiting for it to come in. We're gonna boost out of the river, we're gonna sight cast barra, we're gonna do jacks, trout, finger mark, and hopefully tuskies. Pretty mint, like, mint day. If I can pull that off, then I can stick to my game plan with the tides and the absolute bluebird that we've got going on here. I reckon we're gonna catch fish. So I'm gonna get this thing in, get it working, get it running good. Probably gonna chuck on like an eight inch. Just run this guy for now. Uh, water is pretty clear, so I'm going to run an 8 inch if I see a couple of big fish over 120. Of course, 10 inches coming out. But uh, look, let's get straight into it because water is actually really clean for the conditions. Um, so if I do find a barra, most likely he's going to see the lure, follow it, and most likely turn away, but we might get a bite. Wow. Why? <clears throat> that is just a tight ball of barra. Okay, went just over their heads. I'll go down another little bit. <clears throat> Oh, righto, pretty good shot. Come on, fellas. Do me a solid here, eh? Oh, 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 looking. Throw something big at them and see what they do. Okay. Old 10 inch is about to roll over a few heads here. Oh, I've got a follower, got a follower, got a follower. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh! Ah. Oh, it's a big one following it. You're f Tell you what, it has been a pretty tough morning, but I'm sticking to the plan. So the tide is coming up. It's not really quite where I need it to be. But if you look here, uh, hopefully you guys can see that all right. Got a really nice rock bar on the left and the right of me. Couple of fish hanging out. Um, because I saw all that bait before on that headland, I'm gonna just stick to what works. I'm just gonna put on a 110 Vertrex vibe going to vibe the pressure edge of this rock so I'm going to just basically side scan along I'm heading into the current now so basically just going to watch along here and as I kind of get to the very front edge of these rocks I'm going to turn around and start casting at it because all the bait that's coming from in front of me is going to hit the front edge of these rocks hopefully the fish are going to be sitting down deep nice depth it's like 8 to 15 meters of water when it drops off so 110 vertex just going to vibe the front of it hopefully a trout Hopefully a sweet lip, real tasty little critters, that's all I want. Then we're gonna sneak, sneak into the mangroves, do some side casting, and then 
just keep cruising along the coastline. So as you can see now, starting to drop off a little bit here and the rocks are getting smaller. So there's a couple of bigger rocks on the right hand side. So I might even kind of spin the boat, fish that right hand side. And uh, yeah, look, it's kind of like one of those fail safe methods, but it's just understanding and seeing the rocks and finding structure with current and bait. Three rules, that's it. Got him. Jeez. Go, son. Surely it's like a little grass here, a little finger mark. Oh, stunning creature. He gone. Would have eaten that guy in a heartbeat. Oh sheesh, that's big. Oh no, that was such a good eat. That was such a good eat. That feels like a big cod. <laughs> Come on, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> He's dogging hard. Oh, this is not good. Might have him here. Oh, jeez. It is a big cod. <laughs> wow. Hey, big guy. Jeez, you smoked that, didn't you? Whoa, ow, my wrist. Did not need that from you. Hey. The rare thing you see in Matt's boat these days. Unless there's barrow to be caught. I'm pretty good at it though. <laughs> All right, buddy. Don't know if you can see that. There's a vibe in there. Look man, I'll make you a deal. You don't bite me and I'll let you go. Oh, it's a skits. Oh, oh. Come on. I promise I'll let you go. Don't bite me. Oh my God, yes. We've had a massive win here. Have a quick look at this guy, he's pretty big. And I'm just gonna throw him on back. I don't know how I actually ended up landing that thing on such light like gear, but it just shows. Quality gear, quality hooks, good knots. And uh, look, that is not a small cod. You're lucky, because every other boat around me right now would slay you. But, bye bye. Oh yeah, oh no, tangled. That is a lot of hungry mackerel right there. Look at them. Hey, yeah. Oh, sheesh. Hey, fellas. I don't want you to kill me, twitch it, but this is a perfect example of a headland current and fish in a current line. So. I do talk about it a fair bit. I thought I'd pull up and have a look. And um, yeah, look, there's a lot of fish in it. So they're not the size we want. We're gonna keep going, but it's cool to see.
All right, well, I made my way out to the islands and water clarity is actually incredibly good. So I'm gonna try and chase the tusky. In front of me here, tide's incoming. The fish gonna be pushing up onto the flats. I'm gonna use that to my advantage and just kind of sneak along. I'm just looking for those big blue tuskies. Well, they're a black spot tusky or a blue bone, but they just look like iridescent blue, like a neon blue in the water. One of the hardest runs when you initially hook them, it is the fastest and hardest run you'll ever encounter. So extremely difficult fish to catch, extremely tasty. So it's actually been a real, it's been a while since I've caught one. So if I do get one, he is going to be coming home, but act like just incredible looking coastline. Just being a cruise along here and see if I can find one and see if I can convert him. That's going to be the hardest part. Surely that's, come on, see that, see it, see it. Oh, that's a big golden. Oh no. Yes, I got him. Oh, that's a massive golden. Oh my God. This thing is gonna absolutely fly. Oh my God. I'm gonna have to chase this. It's gonna absolutely hammer. Not on this gear, man. Wow. Oh, look at all the sharks. That's a big golden. I just saw him dip his tail before and I thought I'd, I didn't know if it was that big. I just thought I'd sneak in. I kind of saw him cruising along. I don't know how. I might have to try and hold him against this wind here. Well, oh no, we're in big trouble here. I might have to boost after him and basically try and get him off the drop off. On the light setup, epic. This is what we want. There's a bomby right here, actually. That's not good. Turn, beautiful, sail, sail. All right, I'm just gonna turn him left if I can because there's bombies on my right. Just gonna let him go left. There's definitely a bit of thumb on spool action going on here. Oh no! What happened then? I pulled it. What? When do you pull a jig head out of a golden's mouth? All right. We definitely have target acquired here. That thing is absolutely massive. Oh, that's such a bad cast. I'm gonna go again. Okay, come on. See it? He's on that. Oh, that's massive. Oh my God. Please don't do me. Please don't do me. Oh my God, it's freaking huge. That is massive, that thing. 
Come on, baby. We need you. I need you in my life right now. I need you. This thing's huge. That's how shallow it was. <laughs> the tinny. The tinny. Hit the ground then. Wow. If I land this, I'm going to be... Come on. Don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. <laughs> there is nothing that competes to a Tusky's first run. That is out of control, that is. This is actually huge. <laughs> My friend, you're probably not going back because you guys have been such a pain in my ass that I'm just going to get one back on you if I can. I'm going to loosen up a little bit here. Not that I want to. I saw that thing, I got down low and I thought, nah, sometimes they're too big. Like sometimes they're honestly too big and too smart. And I just went, oh look, you're not going to not have a shot, are you? Oh, that's not nice with the weight coming. And then just put it straight on his sniffer. This thing, big. Wow. Come on. Oh, it's just in the top of the beak. Oh, we got him. I'm gonna have a look at this thing. Wow. <laughs> it is actually huge. That is massive, that thing. Big black spot tusky or blue bone tusky. That was on 20 pound, that thing. <laughs> That's insane. I can't believe how hard that first run was. That is a big fish, hey. We'll get a quick measure on him, but look like you can even see his tail's getting old. And but you know what, mate? Me and you, we have a date this, today on an island. And uh, unfortunately, your lunch. I can't believe I actually got one. These things have been the death of me for so long. Look at that creature. Alright, I'm going to bleed him, do all the right things by him. Uh, put him straight on ice. I've actually got an ice slurry going, so... Just uh, insane, like... Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I 100% just saw that. Oh, stop it. This is going to happen, surely. Surely I can convert here. Where did you go? There you are. I see him. I see him. Oh, there's two. Whoa, why is it so fast? I'm just going to go for a long shot. Oh, and there's a fish here. Okay, we're going for it. Going for it. Long shot. Oh, it's come on. Come on, squids. Oh, stop it. Every now and again, it pays to just look out wide. I don't know why I just looked at this setup this morning and went, you might need your squid rod, you know? Just in case. That's a mega squid. He did have a big friend too. Oh yeah, there's his friend. Oh, this thing's big. That's huge. What's going on here? Do I have two squid? Oh, I had two squid. 
Whoa, settle down. Settle down. Let's do this the safe way. Because ain't no one got time for ink. Oh, don't do that. Don't look at me. Cat, we've got him. Let's try not to get smoked here. So, it's actually a really good looking squid. So, we're gonna go for the karate chop. If you karate chop him here and this body goes white, you've still gotta get the head. So, I pretty much Jackie Chaned him instantly to death then, the whole thing, which is great. Now, right, so if I do catch a squid, I try and clean him as I go, quick, quick little method. Two fingers, slide it down his backbone. And you just work your fingers down the backbone until you start separating as much of that body as you can. Then you want to grab him by the eyes and just slowly work it out. And ultimately you want to pull that ink sac out, which is in there, that's perfect. So, he can sit there for a second. Then, get pretty physical here. And that's the section there that you do not want to touch. That's the ink. So I'm not even going to deal with it because it actually it stains the boat. It's awful stuff. Give that back to the fish. Hands are wash. We are kicking goals. This is a very, very, very rare little thing that's happened here. Just cruising along, heading to the next island. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, stop it. It's pretty good. Oh, did I? I actually think that possibly could have been me that hit that. But that is a Nautilus shell. Not a bad little find there at all. Okay, little trouty. We need a trouty. And then we need to cook him up. One of the most incredible parts about fishing around the islands is that. You can just pull up anywhere and it's absolutely isolated. You got all of it to yourself, not a single person in sight. And uh, look, the surroundings pretty special. So I came prepared today. I really wanted to just catch a nice little trout and cook him up for lunch. I've got wraps, I've got all the kind of good stuff, but I think that tusky is a little bit too big for me, so I'm going to have him later on tonight with the family. But, old Squiddy, hold on a second. Because, the turtle, old Squiddy here is going to be just fine. So, I showed you how I kind of take the head off. Then all you do is you just poke a little hole in the little side flap, run your fingers up it, like that with squid you kind of get a little bit a bit physical with them um, and then i keep all these all these little bits so hopefully you can see this all right but basically just using my thumb to run in between like his wings and the body and then once you get to the tail end you pull that off that all slides off like that pretty simple i keep that because that is going to be red bait or nanny bait one day soon. Slippery little sucker. He can sit there. Something that's very important with bigger squid is making sure you cut them really thin. So if you haven't gone home and you haven't um, soaked it in kiwi fruit, and it's something I strongly suggest everyone tries if they haven't, but with a decent sized squid, try and cut them really thin because otherwise it will be tough and chewy. Just keeping an eye out for tuskies here. Then, this stuff here, you can actually choose between a, it's like a fish one and a chicken one. I prefer the chicken one. Then you get a freezer bag. It's kind of hard to hold and do it all at once. Get a freezer bag, tear him open, tip it in. You probably don't need the whole thing, but it's a bit of a once-off, once-off use. Squid straight in, 
The reason I do use a freezer bag is just because I kind of grab it like that, make a bit of a balloon and just shake it up. And if you make that balloon in it, you just completely coat everything. You don't have to kind of use your fingers, you don't have to get dirty. Just by doing that, like look at the has a backdrop on it. That's just getting coated. Old fry pan's gonna go up there. He's on. It's easy as just doing that. You can see how well it's actually all coated. It's like the old freezer bag does a solid. And I know I've probably tipped. Hey, yeah, don't you try and fall in there. One of the best things about just coming out in the tinny is like, there's no pressure. You know, like on a contender, if you're out there, you, you've spent so much fuel, you're doing so much stuff that you always have this feeling like if you just sit down for a minute, you're gonna miss out on something. Whereas in tinny, the, the fishing's hard. You know, like fishing around the islands is always tough, especially when you're chasing tuskies or barrel. Just something like that where it's, they get a lot of pressure. So, you know, for me to just come out here and uh, do this, it's such a nice relief. And look, I've never really had a calamari wrap before, but I'm down for trying everything once. Something about squid as well. If you don't have the opportunity to soak it in kiwi fruit overnight, uh, very important to cut it thin and then don't overcook it. So like overcooking it will get, will make it tough as well, but that's actually not a bad wrap at all. And then my favorite sauce, fair bit. And a bit of cupid on top of that as well, if I can get it on there. Mint. Well, that's not bad at all. So, I'm gonna eat this. I'm gonna send the drone up. I'm gonna see if we can find some fish that I can cast out as soon as I finish eating this wrap. Alright, full change of pace here. I've actually just snuck into a little creek that I used to fish many, many years ago. It is a run out tide, I am in the tinny, so I'm going to push it to the limit, but I've probably got maybe an hour in here to try and catch a jack or a barra. Um, super tiny, super skinny, should be epic. If I get one, I'll be so stoked, and then I've got to quickly burn out of here. Plus that wind's picking up, so. See if I've still got it, it's all about the casting here. I do have a spin rod, which makes it a little harder, but. There we go. Oh, oh, good Jack. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh, what? It's definitely been a while since you've seen me get a jack. That was cool. Like, proper coastal blue water. That thing is demon red. Epic fish. Thought there might have been a little bar in there, but I'll take that any day. And then, don't bite me. Don't bite me. Good man. Sneak him on back. See you, buddy.
Oh no, Matt, you f Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god! Wow! <laughs> Where? <Wow. laughs> Stop that! Holy sheesh! Wow! I don't know how you stop some of them, hey. Well, you can try, but that is just, he ate it, I just let him eat it. I was like, you know what, you can just eat it, I'll hook ya. He knew he was hooked well before I even set the hooks on him. And uh, I think just giving him that head start, like, <laughs> crazy. What I always forget, what I always forget, is the simple processes of like preparing a fish and preparing a nice meal. And it's something I take for granted a lot, but a lot of you guys out there don't actually know the process. And so I'm gonna start doing a little bit more catch and cook style, a little bit more of preparation of fish and how I kind of do, do different styles. So having one big tusky, I'm gonna kind of try my hardest to use the most of him. Um, problem with tuskies is his scales. So as long as we can work around those scales, work down here, that's good. Once I kind of run my knife through, I use the towel just to run the scales off it. And then as I'm running it down, I'm just kind of feeling for his backbone, I'm keeping the knife level. Running it through, running it through. Okay. Now that I've got that cut, all I do is I put the knife flat. Same thing, I just feel for his backbone and I just make a deeper cut. Once I basically run the knife down behind his gill plate, I'm gonna run it down his spine. And then I'm just gonna slowly, as I work my thumb down, I'm just gonna slowly and then kind of get my fingers in there a bit more. The worst thing you can do is be aggressive with the fillet. You literally just wanna let the knife do its thing because if you start being aggressive with the fillet, you'll actually tear the meat apart. So you can see like I'm just kind of standing him up using his body weight to help it out. And then you get to the, the rib cage. The rib cage is always a pain. There's just no other like, no real good way about it. But I'm gonna slowly try and work around that. You can see for such a big fish, still have white, how white the flesh is, how much fat is all through it. Um, so that's one side. Then, a lot of people do leave the fillet on to make it easier. I don't mind either way. I do find it's really handy to try and keep it on the edge of a bench so you can actually run level. The same thing, we're just gonna go behind the gill plate, run it down behind his head. And this is kind of a harder one because I'm going against the grain here with the scales. But, just gonna use the tip of the knife. Run it all the way through. Then I'm gonna go back, and do a bit more of a flatter, bigger cut. Same thing with the thumb.
Okay. I was trying to do most of it out there, but something about the midges this time in the afternoon, I thought if I went out the back, it'd be a little bit better, it was actually insane. So, took the skin off it. Now, I hate bones, so something I do a lot, when I go from filleting to skinning, I switch over to a much smaller knife. That way, if you do hit a bone, you can actually feel it a lot better. So, down this center line is his bloodline, and although it was bled really well, I still tend to just try and take it out because it is a bit sinewy and basically halfway down you still have that bone of his rib cage. So just with this knife I'm going to run it down the centre. And if you feel anything with these smaller knives you know that you've hit a bone. That's his rib bones through here, like his pin bones. That is one a lot of people forget to take out when they're eating fish, and it's a, it's a nasty surprise, that one. So, now we got that section. We take a, just kind of clean up the fillet a little bit, take any of the sinew out, and that's pretty much perfect. Now, what you wanna try and do, so what I'll try and do is go against the grain, and I'll actually portion the fish in, in ways that it's kind of like more of a medallion style. Um, so even though the fish is quite thick, you can cut it in a way that it'll cook a lot nicer. Right, the exact same way we did the squid or the calamari. Get a freezer bag. Just put it all in there. Pretty simple. I mean, look at that. It's like pearlescent white. Pretty amazing. Then, same stuff. I've been using this stuff for a couple of years now, and I do change it up a little bit, but as an old faithful, and the kids absolutely love it, so we're sticking with it. Straight on top. And then, if you have a fair bit in the bag, you can just roll it around the bench, and that way it won't explode on you. Okay, so we've got Tusky, red cabbage, is that red cabbage? Yep. Red cabbage with a little bit of lemon juice and a bit of um, sugar to get it all going. It kind of like marinates and gets it. Things happening. Jess just done a pretty simple salsa here, which we're gonna add some- Coriander. Coriander. And chili. Are we gonna add coriander to it? Yep, and chili. Okay. Luckily it's coriander. Basically, abusing it. Yeah, well, just beating it. This is for all the tuskies that didn't eat my lure today. Some <laughs> <laughs> tusky have got his wings in here, even managed to pull out his cheeks. They're like the little medallion, so that's gonna soak overnight. I've just salt and peppered it. Um, and then basically one fillet is going to feed five of us and as a really really simple start like I'm going to start getting a little bit more technical involved in this kind of fish preparation and just showing you guys a lot of like what we do behind the scenes of eating the fish but as a real simple like fish taco that's about as good as you can get so it's just a basic salsa on there fish on top nice little wrap kids love it I love it and the best part is it's not even a day old yet. So, um, look, if there's anything else that you guys want me to kind of add into the clips, let me know, put them in the comments below. I'm gonna start doing a little bit longer films and just a bit more detail and stuff and not so much of just catching bulk, even though I love catching bulk, but we're gonna add the kids in there when they're being good and not tired. Avery? Avery? Are you tired and crazy? Hey? Show me. Where's Avery? Where's Avery? There she is.